He, he was great. Um, I do want to say this, is that credit where credit is due. And it's been there long enough because I got chastised for it. I didn't mean any harm, but whatever the communication was between Paul and Rob Boutine about the suit, I knew that had been measured for the food suit. And if you see a credit up there from Moni Yakin, Moni Yakin is they're making a documentary about him now at the BBC. He's been the instructor of movement at Juilliard University for a long time. He studied with Marcel Marceau under Jean Louis Barreau. Anybody know who Jean Louis Barreau is? No. Okay, Jean Louis Barreau is the father of French mime. If you ever see the greatest movie ever made, and I mean the great everybody's favorite movie. Matter of fact, I was at dinner with Mike Nichols, one of my mentors. He said, what's your favorite movie? I said, Children of Paradise. He goes, not that. Not that. That's everybody's favorite movie. It's like saying Marlon Brando's your favorite actor. You can't choose Children of Paradise. But John Louis Barreau plays one of the great mimes ever in Children of Paradise. And Moni studied with him, and we had developed this very serpentine liquid sort of movement. It was almost like Tai Chi with staccato ends to it. And the, it's, it, it just bears saying that Whatever the communication was between Paul and Rob, Rob Boutin, the suit didn't come in ready to shoot. And we were shooting two weeks of other stuff and Murphy stuff before the suit came in. So the RoboCop stuff didn't, stu didn't start till a good 20 days. Did you know this? No, I didn't. The 20 days. had to scare the studio like crazy because they didn't well, you know, see RoboCop. Well, you know, Orion is, it had a reputation of being very hands off mm -hmm. and very laissez faire and very trusting of its talent. Everybody liked to work for Orion. Yeah. And, uh, but they were getting nervous. And then the suit came in, and the inner suit, the, you know, like there's a wet suit, inner suit. Like I said, I was have to do these warm ups to it. <laughs> it took me three hours, and we were shooting to put on the inner suit. And then another seven hours to put on the outer suit. It's 10 hours. And it was on a Friday. And I was like, I lost my mind. And Ed Newmeyer was kind of like running amok great guy but we're all we we're all caving and Ra was extraordinary nervous because this thing was not working look great it was not working we shot one little scene I still see it I'm not going to tell you which scene it is but you know I don't have I don't have control of the arms yet I really don't know how to work the suit it's not really lithesome I'm trying to fight it it's a mess there's one scene that we shot on that Friday and then we all kind of fell apart Paul threw a shit fit, Rob threw another shit fit, Ed tried to get into the mix. I got into Ed's face about getting into it, then I said, I'm not, I, this is not gonna work for me. I don't know, I'm gonna do 10 hours a day, and everybody just went home. Yeah. I got a call in the dead of night, it's on a Thursday, as a matter of fact. I got a call in the dead of night from uh, my agent, who's my one and only agent, and they just retired, said, uh, Peter, uh, Paul wants to fire everybody. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't like Ed anymore, and he's always hated Rob, and now he's afraid that you're going to give him a Rutger Hauer, because him and Rutger Hauer are old friends, and Rutger Hauer always beats him up. He's going to get another Rutger Hauer thing out of you. <laughs> and I said, well, look, the fucking suit doesn't work. And uh, he said, well, what can you do to heal it? And um, I said, I don't know, man. Ten minutes later, the head of Orion, Mike Metavoy, still a good friend, calls up and says, it's all falling apart here, and we're really thinking of pulling the plug on this movie because it's not working. What can we do to make it work? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I said, you know, my agent just called. We, I can make peace with these guys, but I don't know how we're going to solve this suit thing. He says, okay, I got an idea. What if we did tests with it over the weekend? We get a warehouse and we start doing, see what we do to make it work. And I said to Mike, you gotta bring Moni Yakin back down here. Fly him in tomorrow. Pay him off from this Juilliard thing, but get him down here because he's the guy that designed this and that's not what's not working. So we meet in this warehouse on Saturday and Orion is really about to pull the plug on this flick because of this, not only the suit consternation, but nobody Everybody's in a panic. Okay, so we meet in this warehouse. There's Rob. He's scared. Paul's pissed off. He's scared. John's trying to manically hold it together. We don't let Ed Newmeyer in because he's 20 years old. He's bubble gummer. He's got opinions for everybody. And all he is is oil on all flames. I'm standing. I'm trying to put on this thing. And in comes Moni. Moni's an Israeli, French, war veteran, solid, quiet mime, a dancer. And he walks in. He's the only voice of reason. 
And he really saved this film. I always say he saved the film. I said it in this documentary of BBC. Because while these guys are flipping out, Moni goes up to Rob and Paul says, what can we cut? Can you cut out the elbows? Cut out the wrists? Cut out all the joints? Cut out the rubber? Just tear it out. And they start doing it. And, you know, Rob didn't want to do it. Paul said, hey, I don't know what's that. And John Davis says, just do what he says. And they started cutting, right? Mm -hmm. Then he started removing pieces of the plastic. It's sort of like this titanium-like plastic that were, like, inhering my, my elbow and so forth. Then he had pulled out the bottom of the shoes. Then he pulled out, like, the backs of them. And finally, he made something that I could just barely start to move in. Then he took me aside and said this. Now, bear with me. This is one of the things that, this is one of the, you know, every, every crisis is an opportunity. And it's definitely one of the beautiful things, just as Paul's direction did, that made this more of a organic thing for me. And you say the robo thoughts, yeah. how everything slowed down. Right? Moni said, listen, he took me aside. He says, I have to work with Peter for about 45 minutes. So they're setting up all these tests. What they're going to do is they're going to do tests. They're going to look at the tests. They're going to send it back to LA and on a Sunday. They're going to print them on a weekend in 24 hours. Mike Metavoy and Bob Bernstein are going to get on the phone and say whether this movie is going to be made or not. So Moni's just calm, man. And he comes over and he says, listen, you have to slow everything down. You have to slow everything down. You have to make it really, really exaggerated. Don't fight this thing. It's never going to be liquid. It's always going to be like really slow. And I started working on this stuff with him. Mind you, I can't do it now, but I was really, really good at it then. He says, you have to make each one of these movements really slow with like a big head turn. You have to click this stuff off. And I said, man, it sounds, it feels so phony. It just feels phony. It doesn't feel, you know, hip. It, it feels like, like bad opera. And he said, do it. And he said, even bigger. He said, got me to do this stuff even bigger, pulling the gun, bigger, head, bigger, work in this inner suit. And then we shot, not much of tests, Harry. We shot probably about 40 minutes of tests, yeah. right? Walking, turning, slow, pulling out gun, slow. I had to, that's how slow it had to be. I go out of the place, I said, I don't know, Moni. He said, Peter, you'd be absolutely perfect. Here's the difference between an Israeli French guy who's been in a war and a bunch of movie people. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I said, they're, they're, all, they're all in a panic. He said, yeah, they're all in a panic because they're all afraid. He says, the kid's afraid because he's a kid and it's his first movie. He says, the designer's afraid because he's, too, he's, too, just, he's just too sensitive. Paul Verhoeven's afraid because he's Dutch. <laughs> and then he, then he stopped and he said to Peter, the Dutch are depressed. <laughs> I really says, he said, yeah, they're inventive, but depressed. So I, I walk in and I said, so it, it's going to be fantastic. You know, it didn't, it felt like horrible. It felt like really the wheels had come off. And he was absolutely certain that Metavoy would see this thing and be ecstatic and the next Monday we get up and John Davis comes in Meta Boys ecstatic and Paul is still I get it Paul goes no I don't think it's so ecstatic I think it's got problems and whatever and Moni's just standing behind him going yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moni gets a film just about the time that Blockbuster started doing video stores so Moni said, I said but Moni it, it still feels bad so Moni stayed for two weeks working with it just moving that suit and he said, you got to watch this film. This is us with film history and so forth, and you guys with film history, because it's all connective tissue. There's no film made in a vacuum. They're all ripping off somebody else. And even the first films are ripping off narrative art, and that narrative art is ripping off some mosaics on a wall, and those mosaics on a wall are ripping off the caves of Lascaux, you know, which are 2,000 years ago, and that's ripping off Egypt. It, it, it's all one connective tissue. That's why I study art history. Art history is film history. You know, it's just visual, connective entertainment. That, like I said, leverages the intelligence and it gives you aesthetic delight. So he says, watch this film. And he shows me Sergi Eisenstein's Ivan the Terrible. Anybody seen that movie? Yes. Okay, it's a silent movie. You ever seen it? It's like three and a half hours long. Okay, the guy that plays it was an opera singer dancer named Nikolai Cherkasov. He was not a naturalistic actor. You know, he was like a guy of the stage. The movie's very naturalistic, stylized, but it's basically naturalistic. So you see these naturalistic performances. The first time you see Ivan, I mean, I put this thing on. He says, you have to watch this movie. Get this. First time you see Ivan the Terrible, checkers off, goes, takes this step and goes like that. And it is so phony. I mean, it's like the bad, the worst Dracula imitation you've ever seen. And it, he turns and this guy zoom into his face. 
I said, really, Moni? He says, keep watching. Okay, it's like watching also Children of Paradise where you see Arletti with that little voice, that voice. They said, bonjour. I said, you can't watch this for two minutes. Five minutes into yeah. it, you'd follow the end of the earth, give her the credit cards, the house, and everything, you know, <laughs> go down the tubes. The same with Nikolai Cherkasov. I'm watching this 10 minutes in. You can't take your eyes off him, and everything is like really pronounced. And I get it that Eisenstein's making this like abstraction of a horrific guy. Because if the guy's just natural, it's just facts and history. But he wants to show you the abstraction of this bad beast. And man, two days into this, I said, that's it. It's a beast. It's just like the golem. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the golem. It's a beast caught, trapped. No, I always it's thought not. the... Uh, but that only came after four days of, yeah. of doing this stuff. That only came after, Mo after Phil almost died. That only came after Modi came in. Before that, it was more like Spider-Man. And that problem gave me the character and subsequently the movie. So originally the movement was going to be very really, much like really, really, Yeah, really, wow. really liquid. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad you had problems. I'm glad it did too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's astounding, well, isn't it? I mean, you know, you don't give it, up. You don't just what don't... was it like the first time you saw you moving as RoboCop mixed with those sound effects? Because the sound effects of the movement of it just gives an immense power to the movement and, and everything because it's all... It all feels perfect all of a sudden. You can imagine it being different. Uh, I loved it. I, I, you know, it was ab I was absolutely thrilled. Yeah. I was absolutely thrilled that they didn't tweak it. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't do any stop motion, stop motion animation tweaks to it. Yeah. That they really used my, except for the, like I say, the one scene where I couldn't make the suit work. Yeah. But from the time I'm getting out of the chair, on it, getting into the thing, you know, and also with the head off and all the stuff with Clarence. You know, then I, and I was really into it, and when they added that, eh, eh, it was, it, it, I, I was thrilled with it. I was absolutely thrilled with it.